your Bibles, your study guides, your pen, your pencils. Get your thinking caps on. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time in this uh, lesson this morning as we take a look at Thanksgiving coming out of the book of Psalms, Psalms 100. Psalms 100, and you're looking at it, and there's only five verses. And you're thinking, wow, this will be over with quick. Well, guess what? There's a total of 12 admonitions in those five verses and eight reasons. But we won't look at all of them today, okay? Matter of fact, we're going to look at it in a different light today. And, but we're going to go through all five verses, and we're going to take each phrase and each verse. This is what you call expositional, expository, preachy, teaching. And we won't quite get into the exegesis of it because then that would be every verb and word and, and grammar and all of that. But take a look with me, if you would, please, as an introduction. I believe the Bible has much to say about thanksgiving. Matter of fact, note the number of times the word thanks or related words appear in the Bible. Thanks appears 75 times. Thanksgiving, 28. Thank, 27. Thankful, 3. Thanked, 3. Thanksgiving twice, thankfulness once, a total of 139 times we find those words throughout the Scripture. So once is good enough if it's in God's Word for me. But when it puts it in there 139 times, I believe it's something God wants us to do. Amen. And it's time the church is being more thankful and grateful and giving things then we are always whining and crying and complaining and murmuring and all of that, which we're all good at. Come on now, you got to agree with me. Come on, help me out here. I Help me out, Brother George. He was helping me in Sunday school a lot. I appreciated that, man. He came alive in Sunday school, I'll tell you. And I said, man, we got to keep this going because George is on fire. He was on a roll, and I didn't want him to stop, you know what I'm saying? And so we praise the Lord for that. But uh, it, isn't that the truth, though? I mean, we spend more time complaining about this and that and whining and fussing and mumbling and grumbling than we do giving God thanks and, and praising the Lord. And it's time God's people start learning the other. And if we'll learn the other more, we'll drown out the other. And we can literally eliminate it. We can. So let's try that. Matter of fact, Thanksgiving is one of the most needed things in the church today. We have many prayer requests. Can I get an Amen. But few praise and thank the Lord. Now, I'm thankful, at least around here, we do have some praising and thanking the Lord on our Wednesday night prayer time, but we could sure use a whole lot more. And so we're going to take a look at this morning of this wonderful psalm. This is great. I, I'm excited. I'm coming off of Sunday school, so I'm on a high right now. And, and so we're going to have a good time in God's Word on this. Let's read these five together, five verses, and then we're going to come back and digest it. And I hope that you'll get a real blessing out of it. Follow along with me if you would. It is a psalm of praise. It is a psalm of thanksgiving. It's a psalm of giving thanks. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, how many? All ye lands or all ye people. Serve the Lord with gladness. Oh, we got to do something? Yes, Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what, church? Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. His mercy is everlasting. Can I get an amen? amen? Now we're going to take a look at this and have a good time in the Lord today. I trust you'll go out of here smiling and, and, and full of joy and happiness and gratefulness and thankfulness as we approach Thanksgiving this week. But folks, let's not just let it last for today or this week. How about every day? Amen. Got a message coming up on that on Wednesday night, the 25th. Thanksgiving Eve. Don't miss it. It's going to be really good. Well, it's always good because it's God's Word. It's great. Let's pray. Ah, Father, how we do thank you today. We do bless your name today, Lord. That's why we're here. We're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we've come today to bow before you, to give you praise and to give you honor. Thank you for letting us come already and praise you with music and with song. 
Thank you for letting us praise you and, and with, with words, with prayer, with studying of your word. God, it's been a great morning already. Hallelujah. And we just want to thank you and praise you. Thank you for everything, all your blessings, all your goodness, all your mercy, Lord. We don't deserve any of it. But wow, we're grateful for it, and we're thankful for it, and we love you for it. And because of it, we want to bless your name today. We want to bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, in all that is within us. Let us bless your name today. Holy Spirit of God, now come and be our teacher. Be our guide. Give us illumination, understanding. Guide us into all truth. Bring to remembrance the things Jesus has said to us. And Lord, we ask for your help as your servant today. That you would anoint your servant's heart and lips and mind with your Holy Spirit. That you would grant us freedom and liberty to proclaim your message, your word today. And Father, give us ears to hear with, eyes to see, hearts to feel. Help us to be doers of what we're going to learn today on a daily basis to practice it in our lives. And as Jesus said in his letters to the churches of Revelation, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church today. And we'll thank you for it. Father, save souls around the world as this message goes out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And praise the Lord. Well, let's get started. Are you ready to get started? I want to take the first three words, four words. What's the first thing we want to do? Make a joyful noise. In other words, the sound. you got to have sound. If you're going to make a joyful noise... Brother Robert, there's got to be some sound. And by the way, if you go through the Psalms and all the singing and praising and the instruments and everything, it says loud. God likes loud. You read it. He tells you. I didn't write it. He did. I guess he wants to hear it all the way to heaven. But anyway, the sound of this verse. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Psalms 100 verse 1. Well, what does it mean to make a joyful sound? Well, first of all, notice what he said. Praise. A joyful praise. This is a psalm of praise. It ought to be a joyful praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. What kind of a? Make a joyful noise. Well, to make noise, you've got to have sound. So make a joyful sound unto the Lord today. You ought to come here and make a joyful sound. We're not to sit here in church like a bunch of wooden Indians uh, out in front of a cigar store. You remember the wooden Indian, the cigar store there? The chief, he'd wear the bonnet, you know, and he'd be there in front of a tobacco shop or something, and and, and as a wooden Indian. No, we're God's people. We got something to shout about, something to praise God for. Okay? In spite of everything else, God is still on the throne. God is still in control. And so we we need not to worry about anything. We need not to fear anything. In other words, when he says, make this joyful nose unto the Lord, Psalms 911 says, share his goodness with all people. Listen to Psalm 911. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion, that's Jerusalem. Declare among the people his doings. We're to be declaring among the people what God is doing. Now, surely God's doing something in your life today. Okay, there has to be something that God is doing in your life today. All right, Brother Robert, would you please make sure the speakers are up for the ladies back there? On the, on the side of the wall over there, they got knobs for all the rooms back there, and they'll be able to hear. They're back there taking some of our boys and girls and kids today, but we have speakers back there. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Look at that. He said amen. All right. Uh, brother, little guy speaking there. Wow, little she, little she. That's right, little girl. She was making a loud noise, just as long as she don't get too loud. You know what I mean? Amen. Praise God. All right, so we're, we're to make a joyful praise. Also, notice what he said, this joyful praise or sound is to be to what? To all people. To all people. Folks, that means we take it out of these walls. We take it out of these buildings. And we take it out into the street and the highways and the byways and the hedges. And what do we do? We make a joyful noise unto the Lord and we share all his doings, what God is doing. And somebody says, well, what's God doing with all of this? He's keeping you alive. He's keeping this old world still going. He's keeping it still rotating on its 20 to 3 3 degrees axis so that we don't freeze or burn up one way or the other. 
He's creating, he's making it spin just at the exact speed so that we all stay sure, for sure on this planet. Otherwise, we'd be flung off into eternity, into space. So what's God doing? He's doing a lot. If you went out last night or the night before at a cool spell, you'd have seen all the stars and all the Milky Ways in the galaxy. God's keeping all of that in shape and, in, and just functioning just like it's supposed to. Why? Because he is the sustainer of the universe. What is God doing? He's putting a song in my heart today. He's putting a song of joy, and he wants me to make it known to everybody. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to make it known to everybody today that God has put a song in my heart and a song in our church's heart, and we're going to make a joyful noise, a sound, unto all people. Praise God. Thank you, sisters and brothers. So we're to do it to all people. The psalmist says that all those who have breath praise the Lord. How many of you got breath today? How many of you are breathing today? Well, we already heard it from a one-year-old or less. Amen? Let everything that hath breath, Psalms 150, 60, do what, church? Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So how many of you got breath today? How many of you are ready to praise the Lord? Here we go. Come on, what's this say? Hallelujah. You know what that is? That's the highest form of praise you can say to God in the Hebrew is hallelujah. Now, some of you pronounce it all different ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You put that southern accent in there or whatever. Some of you have it all kinds of different accents. My favorite bird over at uh, uh, the Cracker Barrel, uh, he's a talking bird. Uh, I call him the dodo bird, but uh, I don't know really what he is. He's all different colors, but he's, ex- he's exciting, and I'll go over there and talk to him. Now, I love to, to look around, and I can tell most of the time by looking at people, and I'll see the, uh, pretty much my charismatic brothers and sisters in there, Pentecostals, and all of them in there, so I'm going I'm to have fun with this bird. So I'll go over to that bird, and I'll go, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here's all the Pentecostals. Somebody's praising the Lord. I'll go, hallelujah. He'll go, hallelujah. And then, hallelujah. And they're, they're trying to figure out where this is coming from. Now I'm hanging down. So after they look a little bit, I pop back up and go, now give me a good one. Let's go, go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, this bird's great. And I get him to do the hallelujah in and, and, and different ways. And, and, and just, man, I have a good time with that bird. And uh, uh, he's great. So you, we ought to get one of those. I started to buy that thing last year, and I was going to put it in here and put him under the pulpit. And then I was going to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I wouldn't move my mouth. And say, so you see, I'm a tranquilloquist. I can transfer my voice. Have you all looking there. Okay, amen. So let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Today's your day to praise the Lord. But just because we're in church this morning, we need to praise the Lord every day. In other words, you get up tomorrow, praise the Lord. Now, you're going to have a hard time praising the Lord if you're glued to that television and all the fake and false news that's going on and all the lying that's going on and everything else. Just to give you an example, there's just a little less than 700,000 people living in the state of Alaska, which is two and a half times the size of the state of Texas. And they just reported on the wonderful news this morning that there were 900,000 cases of COVID in Alaska. That's 200,000 more than the people live there. <laughs> and this week we're having 100,000 cases new every day. Please don't believe all that. Here's what you can believe. And people start doing that. Just start praising the Lord. Let the people know around you that you're going to get, make a joyful noise and a sound unto the Lord. And you're going to praise Him for what God is doing. Amen. Amen. All right, notice the next verse he says here, verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. What are we to do? Serve the Lord. How many of you, don't anybody say amen, raise your hands, but how many of you are serving the Lord? You see? That's what sanctification is all about. We're saved and set apart unto God for service. Okay? We're set apart from sin in the world unto holiness because that's the only way we can serve God. But when we're serving out here at our church and in your community, where you're at, are you serving with gladness? Or is it, oh, woe is me. Oh, my, here we go again. The pastor wants us at the church at 6 a.m. Are 
But thank God nobody showed up at 6 a.m. So that was one time I'm glad you didn't take me seriously. But oh, you have a good time praising the Lord. And you can really experience that on the mower. Look at Miss Eldor. <laughs> but how am I to serve the Lord with gladness? Now, why should I serve God with gladness? We have to ask ourselves that question this morning. The Bible tells me to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all our people. We're to be telling God with a, no- a sound, a joyful noise about all what God is doing. Then he says, I'm to serve him, and he adds, with gladness. Well, what is that? What, what are we talking about? How, how am I to serve the Lord with gladness? With gladness. Well, I think the first thing we need to do is the joy of my salvation. You see how you can serve God with gladness today is because the joy of salvation. Think about it with me, and this ought to give you a chance to shout a little bit today and praise God if you got breath. He has brought us out of the pit of sin and has put a new song in our heart. Now, has God saved you today? Has God pulled you up out of the miry clay in the pit and set you on a solid rock and put a new song in your heart? Then let your face know it and everybody else around you know it and praise the Lord that God saved my sin-sick, wretched soul. Hallelujah. Now you get down tomorrow, you just start praising God for that. Somebody wants to say, why are you praising the Lord so much? Because of His doings. What do you mean His doings? What He's done for me. What has He done for you? Telling you how to witness tomorrow. He has pulled me out of the miry clay, out of the pit of sin, saved my soul, and set me on the solid rock, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now they'll think you're nuts, but that's all right. Listen to this. So we have this song of salvation. And Psalm 43, look at it with me. And he hath put, say this, God has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. How many are seeing the praise of God in your lips today because he saved you? And fear, that's a reverence, respect of God, and awe. And here's the results. They will trust the Lord. See, we're not going to get people saved, folks, if they don't hear about it. We're not going to see people trusting God if we don't tell them what God has done. Tell them what he's done for you, and then tell them what he'll do for them. For the same thing he did for you, he will do for them. He'll pull them up out of the miry clay in the pit of sin and set them on the solid rock. And then they'll go about praising the Lord and letting everybody know it. And the next thing you know, we got a chain reaction. Wow. Notice what else? This salvation. Now, I was going to really get shouting into this stuff, but uh, 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 we'll keep calm. All right. Notice, second, let me with me when we talk about this service. Why should I serve him with gladness? Because of his salvation. Why should we serve Him with gladness? Because of the joy of knowing the Savior. How many of you know the Savior today? Jesus saved me from all sin. That ought to put a joy in your heart, a song in your heart, that He saved you from all sin. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 1, 21, and, uh, what the angel told him. And He shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call His name Jesus. Why? For He shall save His people from their sins. Now, I want to tell you today, those of you that are watching and listening with us, Jesus wants to save you from your sin. He wants to lift you up out of the miry play and out of the pit and set your feet on the solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. And when he does, and you trust that, he's going to put a new song in your heart that you're going to go out and tell the world about what Jesus just did for you, that he saved your sin-sick soul. Hallelujah. Man, that's something to shout about. That's why the psalmist says, if you've got breath, you need to praise God. Praising for his salvation today. Praising for his, the joy of knowing him. You get to know Jesus today. And when you get to know Jesus, guess who else you get to know? The Holy Ghost. Guess who else you get to know? God himself. I know God. He's a personal friend of mine. I have a direct line to him. Any day of the week, seven days a week, I can come into his throne room where the king is sitting. I don't need an audience. I don't need a reservation. I don't need to make an appointment. I can come at any time and address him as my father, my Lord, my king, my savior, my Messiah, my God. Hallelujah. Shout it from the rooftops. Let me get the big one out. We haven't used this one in a while. Can I get a witness? Amen. Rosa made all these things for us. Hallelujah.
Praise God. All right, let's look at another one. Thirdly, look at thirdly in this song. Now we're taking the second half of the verse. Come before his presence with what, church? Singing. So we see the sound. We see the service. Now we're looking at the singing. Come before his presence with singing. Now people want to know, why do we sing in church? You want to know why we sing in church? Because the Bible tells me to come before the Lord with singing. That's why we opened up the service with singing. We opened it up with the choir singing. We opened it up with the congregational singing. We opened it up with the choir singing again. And if we have a soloist, whoever it may be, or duet, or, or the new quartet, they're working on a new number. We come before the Lord with singing. That's what we're told to do. And to make a joyful noise, to make a sound, and to make it loud. You read about when he says to come with all the instruments. And the string instruments and the brass. And the, he, he, the Lord likes loud sound. I don't know why. He likes to ring heaven, I guess. They get all excited. You know why I think so? Maybe because, see, we get to play all the string instruments and the brass instruments and all that. And all the angels get to do is to play a harp. I thought y'all would like that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Singing. Look at this. Come before his presence with singing. Uh, a couple things here. First of all, what kind of singing? The songs of praise. This is a praise hymn. So we ought to come with him before him with the song of praise. How about I me mean, remember some guys that sang at midnight in prison? Huh? I mean, remember that. Even in prison, Paul and Silas could sing praises unto God. Listen to Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, the midnight hour, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God. Now remember we said in the beginning, and they heard them. And they heard them. And they had the first jailhouse rock. And it wasn't sung by Elvis Presley. It was sung by Paul and Silas. And the night the jailhouse rocked. And the prisoners were all set loose and stayed there because Paul they said they would. The jailer came in and was going to take his life. And he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and your household. And that jailer put his spot that night and left his position. He went home and took Paul and Silas home with them. He nursed up their wounds and their bend. And, their, and he had 42 members in his house that all got saved because two believers sang praises at midnight. Wow. I'm telling you, the night the jailhouse rocked. Oh, praise God. So we sing praise songs. We also sing the song of pardon. The song of pardon. Brought from the depths of sin, we're given a new song. Listen to what Isaiah chapter 40 says in verses 2 and 3. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity, oh, come on, talk to me, church, that her iniquity, that's her sin, is pardoned. Why? For she hath received of the Lord. Hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. John the Baptist. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. You see, we can sing tonight, this morning, a song of praise. You know why? Because God has pardoned me. I stand today before an almighty God, righteous. That's called justification. Just as if I never sinned a sin. It's the easiest way to explain it to you. But justification means I stand righteous before God because of the righteousness of Christ. And when I came to Christ and I was forgiven of all my sins and pardoned of all my sin, Jesus clothed me in His righteousness so that I could stand before a holy and righteous God today at this very moment, righteous. Not because of my righteousness He saved me, but because of His righteousness. I was pardoned, and you can be pardoned today too. God's pardon is for every person who's willing to come to Christ. And you'll get excited like we are in the church this morning. You'll start singing praises and praising God. The guilt is lifted. The sentence of eternal damnation in hell has been pardoned. Pardoned.
pardon. And you don't need a presidential pardon. Huh? You don't need the government. Not the earthly. Because you've got the heavenly judicial government of the God of all the universe has stamped on your ticket. Pardoned. Paid in full. By Jesus Christ. My son with his precious blood. I have a song to sing today, church. Something to be happy about. Something to be glad. Something to have thanksgiving in my heart. Now, you see, you can have this every day of your life. Don't wait for Thanksgiving to come around. Oh, the church is themed this month as Thanksgiving, so I need to be thankful. No, every day. Wow. All right, fourthly now. Let's look at verse 3. We're moving right along. The supernatural. The supernatural. Notice what the psalmist says here. Know ye, what am I to know? That the Lord, He is God. Lord, Adonai, Elohim, Jehovah is God. Well, what do I know about God? Well, what's he talking about in that verse? Are you with me? That all things are under his control. Look what he says. Look in verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not ourselves. So God is the controller. Now listen to me. Quit worrying about what's going on. It's time to get positive. It's time to get upbeat. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to jump up and kick your heels. For those of you that can, please be careful. We don't want anybody to get hurt. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him, that is Jesus Christ, were, talk to me church, how many things? All things created. No, no, it's not where all these things are created. In heaven and are in earth, both visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, that's kings, dominions, powers, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. So I can sing this morning of a song of praise because of the supernatural. See, folks, you've got to start living in the supernatural. You've got to start thinking spiritually. We are supernatural people. See, when I was born, I was born in this earthly tabernacle called this body that's mortal. That's corrupt and is going to die. But when I got saved, I stepped out of the physical and I stepped into the spiritual. Come on, talk to me. I have a new name written down in glory. I got a new body awaiting me. I'm already a citizen of glory, according to Colossians. All right, I'm a citizen of heaven already. I'm a kingdom kid. I'm a child of the God. I'm already in the supernatural. I have a spiritual, supernatural body. If any man be in Christ, that little in, very important preposition. And if any man, any boy, any girl, any young person be in Christ Jesus, the Lord is a new creation. That word creation is a new transformation. You have been transformed from death unto life. You've been transformed from the physical into the spiritual. Hallelujah. That's worth thanking God for. That's why David said, we learned this morning in Sunday school, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Even if they kill me. They've only killed the physical. You can't touch my spiritual. Hello. Praise him because he's the creator. Praise Him because He's the controller. Praise Him because He's the creator. It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves, the latter part of verse 3. In other words, God created man. How many believe that? And it's time we get that back in our public schools. And in our colleges and our universities. 
Get all these professors out of there that's thinking that we come from a bunch of tadpoles and, and frogs and, and, and amoebas and floating around in some pond scum for a few million years, jumped up on a lily pad, started to croak, took a flying leap, hit the ground, ran, walked around, ran up into a tree, climbed up in a tree, swung from tree to tree for a few million years. Then all of a sudden our tail broke off and down we went. And when we landed on the ground, man, I have finally arrived dressed in a three-piece Marcus Heeman suit. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It takes more faith to believe that baloney than it believes that God created me in his likeness and his image, and God is not a baboon. Give these kids some real self esteem that they're created in the very image and in the very likeness of God himself. Oh, praise God, he's my creator. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul or a living life. And you go on and read that account in Genesis, and we are created in his likeness and in his image. Oh, praise the Lord. I don't want to look like a baboon, and I don't want to believe I came from one. Hallelujah. Now, if you want to believe your grandfather and great-granddaddy and great-great-granddaddy were monkeys, then go right ahead. I'm going to believe my God. I'd much rather look like God than look like a baboon, amen? Now, some of us act like one once in a while, but that's okay, all right, okay? Some of us act like donkeys once in a while, too. Because of sin, now listen to me. We're created in the image and the likeness of God. He's the controller and the creator. But because of sin, now listen to me, God had to recreate man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Oh, that's good. And you know when he did that? At the time of salvation. Because until then, I'm still... I'm still back. But at the time of salvation, God recreated me into the immortal, into the incorruptible. Thank you, Lord. I got something to say hallelujah about today, Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look what you've done for me. Look what you've done for the world. Man, we owe you everything. Well, let's look at the next one. Number five. Latter part of verse three. I must hurry. I got to limit myself to a minute or two on each thing. Ah, the sheep. The sheep. So we're thanking God. We're praising God with the sound. Okay? With the service. Amen? With the singing. With the supernatural. And now with the sheep. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now, what does that tell me? Well, you've got to get into the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep. Now, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me, right? Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what a shepherd does. So you're all sheep today. So all together on three, Let, uh, let's make the sound of the sheep. Here we go. One, two, three. This is kindergarten. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Bah. All right, sheep. Good job. Fun to come to church. Good job. But notice we're not just sheep. We're sheep of his pasture. We're sheep of his pasture. You see, notice he said, we are his people. The psalmist says in verse, the latter part of verse 3, we are his people. That's personal. That's personal. Now look at what it says in John 1, 12. Now you know what came in, in the beginning. You go into the first, in the first part of that. It says that what, and he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Now we all like to think of that as he came unto Jerusalem or unto the Jew, and they received him not. That is true. But, in the next verse it says, but as many. There's the contrast, the conjunction. You see, 
He came unto all of us. But only those that receive him and believe him become the sons of God. Because he came unto the world. Not just his own. You see, salvation was not just for the Jew. It was for everyone. Jesus died for the whole planet. All of God's creation was, was tainted by sin. And so God had to do something about it, so he decided he would go and be the sacrifice for the sins of the world and for sins of all mankind. He just didn't come to the Jewish people. He came to every person who was willing to believe in him. But as many, you see, we have, but he came unto his own, but as many. See, he came unto his own, but as many received him. That makes it personal. Became the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Oh, praise God, it's personal. You don't think so? John 3, 16, we all know that. For God so loved the what, church? The world, the cosmos, humanity. That what did he do? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, not just the Jewish race, but whosoever, Believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In John 3, 15, it says, if you believe on him, you have eternal life. That's a quality of life. In John 3, 16, you have everlasting life. That's for all eternity. In John 17, it says that Jesus came not uh, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned, in verse 18. But he that believeth not the Son of God is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in his heart in the only name of the begotten Son of God. Oh, I'm his sheep. He's my shepherd. It's personal. Well, what's a shepherd do for the sheep? He protects them. Protection. And the sheep of his pasture. It's the latter part of that verse. Listen to what Isaiah 53, 3 says. But he was wounded for our transgressions, that's our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities, that's our sins and lawlessness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. What's he talking about there? He's not talking about physical healing. Are you you watching? You were bruised. He was wounded for our transgressions. Father, forgive them. When you pray, our Father, forgive those who have trespassed against us. Transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's our sin. That's our lawlessness. Not talking about physical healing here. He's talking about spiritual healing. He's talking about what sin does to somebody. And he said, I came to take all those stripes and get beat up and get my face punched in, spit in my face, get my beard plucked out, thorns driven in my head, whipped on my back from the top of my back to the bottom of my feet till I look like a bloody hamburger meat. I went to the cross and got nails stuck in my hands and in my feet and a spear thrown through my side. Why? So you could be physically healed? No. So that you could have spiritual healing. So you could have life everlasting. Oh, my goodness, folks. Oh, i am got to praise God today because I'm a sheep. Bah! Aren't you glad he didn't say a goat? But I like the goats because they're cleaner. <laughs> I know, we lived with them in Africa. Stink. Dirty. That's why we need a Savior, because we stink. Because we're dirty. Because sin has dirtied us and polluted us and defiled us. And we smell like it. We look like it. But Jesus comes along and says, I've got a remedy for you. My precious blood can wash you whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got something to praise God for. Amen. Hallelujah. We got something to give God the glory for. Okay, rejoice. Uh, uh, eh, eh, eh. No, that's just preaching, brother. Amen. Can I get a witness from somebody today that we love the Lord and we need to praise Him for what He's done for us? Boy, I tell you, I love the Psalms. They're fantastic. All right, let's look at number six. Ah, we've got to start putting it to practice now. Now we've got to show it. The showing. Let's take a look at the showing. Verse four. 
Here's the showing. Enter into his gates, church, with thanksgiving. When you walk through the front doors into the lobby, you entered the gate. Hello. When you came in these doors, you entered into the court. Are you with me? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's how you should have came in this morning. And enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So what did he say? We're going to enter the courts with praise. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. That's why our brother Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, In everything, church, give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So when you walk through the front doors into the lobby, you should have saw all the wonderful, beautiful work that the folks did and begin to give God a thank you. Oh, this looks great, man. Thank you. Thankful for this. God, I'm thankful for this. This is wonderful. This is awesome. I thank you for this. And then as soon as you walk through those doors, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because now I've entered into the courts. That's right. Holy ground is right. So when we enter into his courts, amen, are you with me? Praise the God. We entered into the gates with praise. We entered into the courts. See, it transfers from the gates. You've got to take the temple and the sin of God in Jerusalem and, and how they worshiped. You see, they were in the, there was the outer courts which belonged to the Gentiles. Okay, then there's the inner, then there's the inner, and there was the gates, and so, and then only the Gentiles, only the Jewish people were allowed, and most of them were the, the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees and the Sadducees and, and the Pharisees and all that crowd could go into the inner courts. And what was in the inner courts? There you had the showbread and the tabernacle and the candles and everything, and, the, and then behind that was the Holy of Holies. Amen. We've come into his courts, but what did they do when they went into the courts? There was singing and praising uh, outside, but then when it was time to go into the courts, it was time to worship. Now it's time to worship. Be thankful unto Him. That's what it says in the Psalms there. Now I'm reading Psalms, verse 4, latter part. We're about to wrap it up. i got three and a half minutes. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. Now lastly, the seventh S. Seven being the perfect number. The number of completion as we praise the Lord today. For the Lord is good, verse 5. Come on, church, talk to me. For the Lord is good. He's good all the time, and all the time, He's good. Amen? Amen? That's why the Bible says about Jesus, it said even the Scripture itself testifies of it, that He went about doing good. Sameness. We're looking at the sameness. Everything is the sameness. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Verse 5, for the Lord is good. That's the first thing. His mercy is everlasting. That's the second truth. And the third, and His truth endureth for what? To all generations. All right, three things there. Let's look at it quickly. All right, three things that remain the same. Three things that remain the same. Number one, the Lord is good. That remains the same. The Lord is good. How many of you know what Romans eight twenty eight says? Still in the Bible, isn't it? And we know. Say we know. What do we know? That all things work together for good. How many things? All things. Coronavirus? Come on, coronavirus? Coronavirus? All things work together for good. Now notice the working together for good, who it's for. To them who are called according to his purpose. Are you getting a hold of this? Okay, that all things work together for good, first of all, to them that love Him. To them that love the Lord, love God, and then to them that are called according to His purpose. Are you called according to His purpose? Yes, we are. Do you love God? Yes, we are. Then Corona's going to work for our good. Come on now, talk to me. If we believe this book and what it says, then Corona's going to work for our good. I don't understand it all. Never will understand it all. 
Now they're saying that all of you people that don't wear masks, you're the ones that are contagious and giving it to everybody. So you see, they can't make up their minds. All of you around here, no mask on, you say you're the, con- you're con- you're, you're, the con- you're the contaminated ones, you're all infected, and you're going around giving it to everybody. So wear your mask. They also said this morning on the news this morning, things are going to change. Mandatory mask. They said the holidays coming up are going to be different. This is Channel 13 News this morning, and they're going to put a limit on spending. That's called communism. That's socialism, communism at its best. They're going to dictate to what you can spend on the holidays. That was on Channel News this morning. But I know, because he's the creator and the controller, that all of this is going to work out for my good. Because I love him, and I've been a called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. I got, I'm uh, out of the TV time, but we'll make it work one way or the other. Amen. We went off, the cl- went off a TV. Hang in here. We'll stay with us. Don't go away. We haven't left yet. Trumpet hasn't sounded. We haven't gone. We're still here. Got to give you an invitation to come to Christ. Amen. So the Lord is good. That's one thing that doesn't change. Amen. What's the third thing that doesn't change? The second thing that doesn't change. His mercy. His mercy is how long? Everlasting. How long is everlasting, church? Psalms 103, 17 says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Notice, upon them that fear Him and His righteousness unto children's children. That means generation to generation. That doesn't change. And oh, this is the favorite one I like of all. It doesn't change. Truth. Truth doesn't change. We don't have to change truth. We don't have to alter it. We don't have to muster it up. You see, we don't have to doctor it up. Uh, we don't have, all we got to do is tell the truth because the truth is fact and it never changes. But when you tell lies, you got to keep telling more lies and more lies to cover up the other lies. But truth never changes. That's why Jesus said, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. That's why Jesus told doubting Thomas, Thomas, I am. He referred to himself as the I am. I am Thomas Jehovah God. I am the true way. I am the truth. And I am the life, the definite article, the before the word. And no man. No boy, no girl, no young person, no teenager, no old person, nobody, no humanity is going to come unto my Father, Father God, Jehovah God, Elohim, Elohim, except by me. You see all these other people in these movies, sometimes they stand up and, you know, beat their stick. Well, Jesus, I could just see him. Thomas, nobody's coming to the Father but by me. That's why he said in the first verse of John 14, 1, in you believe in God, believe also in me. The reason why you better believe in me, because if you want to get to see him, you're coming through me. Otherwise, you're not going to make the trip of the journey. Simple as that. It's Jesus and nothing plus mine is nothing mine. Amen, you understand that? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man is coming unto the Father but by me. They're not going to get to God outside of Christ. You're not going to go around him to get there. You've got to come through him. You've got to come by him. You've got to come by the way of the cross. You've got to come by the way of Calvary, my friend. If you want to get to God, if you want to get to heaven, you want to see heaven, you want to enter heaven, there's only one way. Jesus did not tell Thomas, I am a way or some way. I am the, the definite article, the. I am the way, Thomas. And if you want to see the Father, it's good, Thomas, you believe in God. That's fine, because they believed the Old Testament. They believed in Jehovah God. But he said, Brother Thomas, you want to go to heaven. I hate to tell you this, but this is the truth. I am it. You're either going to come through me or you're not going. Because after all, Thomas, in a few hours from now, I'm the guy that's going to go pay the way for you to come. And since I'm the one that's paying the way and going through all this, I think I have the right 
Amen? God has the right and the power to demand the way we go to heaven because he paid the price. Period. Man. It's hot up here. But not as hot as it's going to be for some people if they don't come to Christ. And that's why we're here for you. That's why we're on live stream. That's why we're on the internet, the YouTube. They put a disclaimer on me this morning on the radio programmer. That's all right. We love you guys. Just keep us on there. Station doesn't necessarily hold to the facts and the truths of what I say. So they're protecting themselves. That's all right. We love you. We're going to tell you the truth. Now, you've got a lot to praise God for today. A lot to be thankful for. A lot to rejoice in. Not just today. Tomorrow. Tonight. Next week. Next year. Even all this stuff. And you're going to thank him and praise him because you can't use your carte blanche card. I'm sorry. Because now it has no limit on it. Amen. Aren't you glad there's no limits on this? Aren't you glad there's no limits on salvation? That it's free to all who are willing to come and believe. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Jesus' blood washed it white as snow. That's why Jesus said, if you're heavy and laden, you come unto me, and I will give you rest. Are you restless today? You're searching today? Come to Christ. Come to Christ. That's why we're here. That's why we've gone over a few minutes, so you'll come to Christ. That's the most important thing. That's why we're there for you. That's why we're coming into your home, and to your phones, and everything else, is we want to share the precious a message of salvation, God's free gift of salvation, of pardon, forgiven, all because of Jesus. And see, and when you accept that, then you can do like we're doing today, rejoicing, praising God, shouting hallelujah, and all that goes with it. Praise God. If you've never come to Christ today, let me invite you to do so right now. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed here in the auditorium. Those of you that are watching and listening right now, we want to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus. You're tired, you're beat up, you're worried, you're frustrated, you're afraid. Oh, my friend, you're not sure of tomorrow, the uncertainty of it. Why not come to Christ? Let him take care of, first and foremost, your spiritual need. That's a new life in Christ. Heaven, eternity. Let that be taken care of first. And the Lord will help you work the rest out as you grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. But you've got to be saved first. You've got to come to Christ first. So we want to invite you to do so right now. The Bible says, if we will confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, call upon the Lord, and receive Him, we shall be saved. We're going to do that right now. We're going to confess with our mouth. All right, here we go. Let me help you. Those here in the auditorium as well. Dear God, that's right, go ahead. I confess with my mouth, you are the Lord from heaven. That's what the Bible says. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I have sinned against you, God, in heaven. And I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me. And he will, my friend, he will. I do now believe, there's the faith, trust in my heart that you died on the cross for my sin you took my place that day on Calvary you paid my sin debt just for me I believe now that you were buried and that you rose again the third day according to the scriptures the Bible and so right now by faith I do call upon you Lord Jesus and receive you into my heart and life to be my Lord and my Savior and to take me to heaven someday when I die. And now I pray this simple little prayer of faith in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching, tuning in with us. We trust we've been a blessing to you. We trust you've been motivated today, challenged today, encouraged today. But most of all, we trust of those of you that didn't know Jesus, today you got saved 
and born again. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you in the days ahead. Remember, God loves you, and so do we. God bless you as we go. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Church, let's stand to our feet. If you would, please, with me. Sing our hymn of invitation today. Now it's time to praise the Lord. It's time to give God thanks. It's time to give God praise. That's what the church is all about. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. Jesus said, this is an altar. This is where he said, this is where I hear and answer prayers, according to the Old Testament, is at the altar. Here's the altar. It's time for us to thank God, praise God, giving praise, giving thanks for everything, everything. And if nothing else, especially the fact, man, that he saved you. Oh, praise God, I'm saved. And I can go to bed tonight knowing I'm saved. I can wake up tomorrow morning knowing I'm saved. I can wake up and have a car run over me. I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I can wake up if a nuclear rocket hits my house and, and it vaporizes me. God has no problem putting me back together. Amen. Because why? I'm saved. 